Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on a Monday, April 17th, 2023. Bittrex is reportedly facing potential action from the U.S. SEC. That's even though it's preparing to shut down its operations in the United States. So here's what's up. The Enforcement Division of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is inclined to recommend that the agency sue Bittrex. They want to take action over alleged violations related to investor protection. The SEC sent Bittrex a Wells Notice. Anyone who's been listening for a while now knows that a Wells Notice is a warning that the agency is considering legal action. It generally means lawyer up, you're getting sued. Bittrex's general counsel is David Maria, and he said that the company was informed about the potential SEC action back in March. Well, by March, Bittrex had already started the process of winding down its U.S. operations. The SEC makes allegations that Bittrex violated laws by doing business as an exchange, broker-dealer, and clearinghouse without registering with the regulator. Now, Bittrex has said no way. They said that they tried to register with the SEC. They tried, but they were unable to do so because the SEC did not communicate clear regulations for cryptocurrency exchanges. So Bittrex isn't sure whether the SEC will file a lawsuit, given that the company is terminating its U.S. operations. Now, regardless, if the SEC does sue, Bittrex says that it will fight the case. All of this comes just weeks after Bittrex announced plans to stop all operations in the United States. Fittingly, they cited the challenging regulatory and economic environment as reasons for the decision. And Bittrex is not the only cryptocurrency exchange that the SEC has gone after. In 2022, the SEC charged Gemini with allegedly misleading investors about security practices. In addition, the SEC sued Kraken for $1.25 million for failing to register as a broker-dealer. The SEC's increased scrutiny of cryptocurrency exchanges is a sign that the agency is taking a more active role in regulating the cryptocurrency industry. This is likely to have a significant impact on the way that cryptocurrency exchanges operate in the United States. That said, this activity is not universally welcome, even in the halls of Washington, D.C., For example, let's talk about U.S. Representative Warren Davidson, because Davidson said that he will introduce legislation to fire Chair Gensler. Davidson is a Republican from Ohio, and he's also a strong supporter of cryptocurrency. The congressman has been critical of Gensler's handling of the cryptocurrency industry. Now, to be sure, Gensler is a vocal critic of cryptocurrencies. He's been known to call them highly speculative and rife with fraud. He also said that he believes most cryptocurrencies are securities. I'm sure it's just coincidence that classifying them as securities would subject them to SEC regulation. Davidson joins other cryptocurrency advocates. He argues that Gensler is overstepping his authority. He says Gensler's regulations are stifling innovation in the cryptocurrency industry. Critics also say that Gensler's focus on cryptocurrencies is a distraction from the SEC's more important work, that of protecting investors from fraud and abuse. Now, we don't know whether Davidson's legislation will have any success. I don't really think so. The SEC is an independent agency, and it's not clear that Congress has the authority to fire Gensler. However, Davidson's moon is a sign of a growing political divide over the cryptocurrency regulation which is interesting in this case. Because in addition to Davidson's legislation, SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce has also criticized Gensler's handling of the cryptocurrency industry. And we spoke about this a little bit last night. Now, Pierce is also known as Crypto Mom, and she said that Gensler's regulations are unnecessary and they're overly burdensome. Pierce's comments are a sign that there is a growing rift within the SEC over how to regulate the space. So Gensler is facing strong criticisms from within and without. In this case, Gensler is a strong supporter of regulation, while Pierce believes that the SEC should be taking a more hands-off approach. It remains to be seen how, or even if, this rift will be resolved. It's clear that the SEC's approach to cryptocurrency regulation is under scrutiny. 
Now, one company that's trying to get registered with the SEC wants to carry out over-the-counter stock trading on a blockchain. Blackstar Enterprise Group is their name, and they've been developing the platform since 2018. In addition, they've been in communication with the SEC for almost two years. The company did recently provide a detailed plan to the SEC's Trading and Market Division. This gave more information about how its platform will be operated. Blackstar's CEO said that he started the process to get the SEC's permission to build the platform's demo in 2018. Quote, We have proved that U.S. registered securities can be traded digitally on a blockchain, that the process is compliant with broker-dealers, back office, and SEC's rules. So this platform will allow trading OTC securities. Customers will continue to use brokerage accounts and broker-dealers, and the transfer agent will continue to maintain the shareholder records. All of the custodial duties are intended to remain the same. The platform will pass encrypted customer information to the appropriate parties. Blackstar's platform is built on a private blockchain and is powered by Amazon's Quantum Ledger database. They said that it would remain in the testing phase until it gets licensed to a broker-dealer, clearing firm, or alternative trading system. Once approved, the SEC and FINRA will become certificate holders in the blockchain. They will have full access to transactions. Tokens, crypto assets, and short selling transactions will not be supported on the platform. They do believe that the platform will increase transparency and mitigate risks of investing in OTC stocks. Quote, from a timing standpoint, we feel this is an exciting time for Blackstar. Our proposed digital trading platform could potentially help resolve multiple existing trading issues, including concerns related to fraud in the U.S. financial markets. A similar situation is taking place in Germany. The government wants to use blockchain technology for stock trading. Recently introduced legislation targets the capital market's digitalization through the issuance of electronic securities on a blockchain. The intent is to make the stock markets more accessible to startups and small businesses. Well, that was a lot to get through, and I'd like to take just a minute to ask you to like, follow, and subscribe to the Crypto Overnighter podcast. It makes such a huge difference in getting attention to the show. So thanks. The Blockchain Association is a cryptocurrency advocacy group. They have filed additional freedom of information requests to two regulators. These requests are for information related to the recent closures of Signature Bank and Silvergate Bank. They're asking the Federal Housing Finance Agency and the New York Department of Financial Services for information about the closures. And they're specifically asking whether those closures were the result of insolvency or regulatory pressure. The association is also looking into whether the failure at Silvergate was the result of a politically motivated decision a decision made by the Federal Home Loan Bank of San Francisco. The Blockchain Association is a nonprofit organization. They represent the interests of the crypto industry. They have over 100 members, and these include industry executives, investors, and companies. And they've been actively lobbying the U.S. government on behalf of the crypto industry. In 2022, they spent $1.9 million on lobbying efforts. Their FOIA requests are part of their ongoing efforts to get more information about the regulatory environment for crypto. They believe more transparency is needed in order to ensure that the industry can grow and thrive. And that leads us to our cover story for tonight. Drug Holding and Investments, or DHI, is a commercial arm of the Royal Government of Bhutan. And they've been busy growing a crypto portfolio totally without disclosing it to the public. In fact, these funds only came to light after the crypto contagion events in 2022 when companies like Celsius and BlockFi filed for bankruptcy. This information comes to us by way of Forbes, and they report that Celsius showed that DHI withdrew over $65 million. Not only that, they deposited almost $18 million in crypto. What happened is BlockFi lawyers filed a complaint against DHI. They wanted to claim them as outstanding assets. They're alleging that the fund defaulted on its $30 million loan back in March. Now, BlockFi claims that DHI refused to repay the loan in full. 
This was after liquidating the 1,888 Bitcoin collateral with a value of $76.5 million at the time. DHI CEO is Uwal Deep Dahal. Now, they told Forbes that the issue is confidential. They said, quote, the matter with BlockFi has been settled. So Celsius and BlockFi were two of the most prominent bankruptcies filed from within the crypto space last year. On July 14th, Celsius went first, filing for Chapter 11. And since then, they've been dealing with bankruptcy proceedings in addition to working on a restructuring plan. In fact, we just went over that plan during last night's show, so to be sure to check that out. Now, on November 28th, BlockFi filed for bankruptcy. This was after being affected by the collapse of FTX. Now, it's still too early to say just what this means for Bhutan's economy. The country is small, with a population of just over 700,000 people. Their GDP is just $2.3 billion. Also, it's unclear just how much money DHI invested in crypto or how much of a loss they took as a result of those investments. To be sure, the news is likely to raise concerns about the risks of investing in crypto. Bhutan is a small, developing country. Their economy is vulnerable to sudden shocks. If their losses are significant, that would have a negative impact on the country's economy. So Hong Kong is trying to position itself as a crypto hub and doing so has opened up opportunities for Chinese banks and funds alike. Now, there is still a blanket ban on crypto-related activities in mainland China. That said, we've covered it here. Several state-affiliated banks are showing interest in building partnerships. They're intent on onboarding the regulated crypto companies due to spring up in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong arm of the Bank of Communications is one of China's largest state-owned banks. They're collaborating with cryptocurrency businesses registered in Hong Kong. They're reportedly in talks to open accounts for regulated companies. In addition to the Bank of Communications, we've got ZA Bank. They're Hong Kong's largest virtual bank, and they're going to act as the settlement bank for crypto companies. So you might want to go back and check that episode out. Now, along with providing account services to cryptocurrency businesses, these banks will serve as settlement banks. This will enable token deposits at authorized exchanges to be withdrawn in Hong Kong dollars, Chinese yuan, and US dollars. Paul Chan is Hong Kong's financial secretary. Now, at the beginning of the year, he said Hong Kong is pushing to collaborate with more crypto firms in 2023. And they are getting results. Nearly 80 cryptocurrency firms have shown interest in opening or expanding their businesses in the city. That old saying, politics makes for strange bedfellows, may have a parallel in the financial world. I say that because of the increasing involvement of Chinese state-owned banks. Besides onboarding crypto companies and opening bank accounts for regulated firms, the Chinese government-backed CPIC Investment Management launched two crypto funds. CPIC is the second largest insurance firm in mainland China. Their newly launched crypto funds are more focused on institutional investors rather than retail. China's growing interest in crypto via Hong Kong has surprised many in the crypto ecosystem, including me. It's surprising because China carried out multiple crackdowns on crypto-related activities on the mainland. And now it looks like the Chinese government is willing to allow crypto to operate in Hong Kong. Possibly because Hong Kong has a separate financial system from mainland China. Now, it remains to be seen how long China will allow crypto to operate in Hong Kong. However, for now, Hong Kong is positioning itself as a leading crypto hub in Asia. And finally, Shaquille O'Neal was served with a lawsuit filed against FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried. This lawsuit was filed by an Oklahoma FTX investor. They alleged that Shaq and other celebrities promoted FTX as a legitimate investment opportunity when in fact it was a fraudulent scheme. O'Neill was served with a lawsuit at his home in Atlanta on Sunday. The process server said that O'Neill tried to drive away, but they were able to serve him with the papers. So it's not that the literal and figurative giant had a change of heart. They just finally caught up to him. This suit accuses Shaq and other celebrities of making false and misleading statements about FTX, all in order to promote the exchange. It also alleges that FTX engaged in deceptive practices. 
Things like making it difficult for investors to withdraw their money. O'Neill has not yet responded to the lawsuit. He has previously said that he was just a paid spokesperson for FTX. He said that he doesn't know anything about the company's business practices. This lawsuit is still in the early stages. Even so, people are watching because it could have an impact on O'Neill's career. I mean, he does do a lot of endorsements. If he's found liable, he could be ordered to pay millions of dollars in damages. This lawsuit is also a reminder of the risks involved in investing in crypto, especially when celebrities are involved. Don't get sucked in because your favorite star is shilling some product. Do your own research before investing. Don't just go taking some celebrity's word on what's what. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating or maybe a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.